All right, guys, it's that time. We got our SI fuel injectors right here, and we're gonna be throwing them on in our eighth gen Civic. I'm gonna break it down how you have to remove the fuel rail, how to swap out the injectors for bigger injectors. In my case, I'm doing a turbo build on my eighth gen Civic, so we need more fuel to make this puppy run with a turbo. So watch the whole video. I'll explain everything, what injectors I chose and whatnot. So let's go. So we're doing a lot of work on the car. We got the front end off. We also took off the cowl here, which is gonna give us way more room in the back. If you guys have 8th Gen Civics, you already know how tight the clearances are right here. You could probably get it done without removing the cowl, but to film a nice video for you guys to show you everything I wanna show you, we removed it. Um, I do have a how-to to take this off on one of my do-it-yourself videos, how to do the valve lash adjustment. But let's go in the back right here. I'll show you guys what, what you're gonna have to do. Essentially, at this point, there's a plastic cover. You have to just pop out. The cover has grommets that hold it in place. Once that is out, you have to do a few things, right? There's two 10 mil bolts right here that hold the fuel rail in place. These two 10 mil bolts, you're gonna have to remove. Now, this is the fuel line that supplies the fuel rail. In order to disconnect the fuel line, you'll have to pop this clip off. Right here, this just pops off. And as you can see, why don't you come around this way? There is a tab right here. You're gonna have to squeeze this tab. All right, this is the tricky part. You're gonna have to squeeze this tab in, and that way you're gonna be able to pull out the fuel line right here, disconnected. Be careful, these parts are pretty brittle here. And uh, you can open your gas tank before you disconnect the fuel line. But I have a full tank of gas. I opened the gas cap, and for the most part, we didn't get much spillage, which is good. At this point, uh, you got your fuel injector connectors right here. I'll show you guys that. And you're just gonna have to disconnect, disconnect the fuel power supply from every single injector right here. All right, once you disconnect that, you're gonna have to tug on this fuel rail because it's probably been sitting in there for the life of the car and it's it's stuck on there. So kind of wiggle it out, wiggle it out. Again, I already took this out earlier. I'm doing this to show you guys. You're gonna pop the fuel rail off and these are the fuel injectors here, factory fuel injectors. And you can see all that uh, contamination on them. And this is essentially why a oil catch can might help clean keep things clean in the intake manifold but this is the fuel rail so let's let's go down here and i'll show you guys further how to remove the fuel injectors all right i got the r18 fuel rail on top with my factory injectors this is the k20 fuel rail as you can see the offset is different you cannot use a k20 fuel rail you're just gonna have to swap out the fuel injectors these are the k28 gen civic 310 cc fuel injectors compared to the factory 185 cc fuel injectors i just finished rebuilding replacing the gaskets the new pinto caps in the spacer cleaning them up got new filters on them as well so we're just going to swap out these 310s for those 185 cc's for this turbo build you do have to have some kind of software ecu software in order to program the bigger fuel injectors so the car can run appropriately we're going to do that on Hondata. we already got the tune mocked up we're just going to go ahead install the fuel injectors and then install the tune on the vehicle all right at this point guys there are these metal clips you just have to pry off from the injectors that hold them in place One trick I did, I took DW40 and sprayed it right in these little pockets here just to lubricate the gasket a little bit. These things will be pretty stuck on here. So I let them soak actually overnight. And now the moment of truth, I'm just gonna wiggle them out and pull back. This is gonna take a lot of effort right here. Just keep wiggling, keep pulling. And they pop now you got that 
beautiful 93 octane coming out. There we go. So just pull them out. And we'll be back with with the update shortly. All right, guys, we got everything laid out here. As you can see, SI fuel injectors right here with the SI fuel rail that comes with the SI injectors. And then we got the R18 injectors here with the R18 fuel rail. Um, you definitely cannot run an SI fuel rail. You see everything is different, the offset, the spacing. So we got the old ones out. We're gonna put the new ones in, lubricate this with gasoline, put the gaskets in, and we should be good to go. All right, looks pretty good. We'll lube up these tips as well and then reinstall everything into the intake manifold. So right now I got a Q-tip full of gas. We're actually cleaning the mounting surfaces where the injectors go in. I already cleaned it beforehand, but it doesn't hurt to just clean out the little holes. There is a lot of contamination there, some dirt, and we don't want our fresh gasket to be sitting on a dirty surface. So even that, I cleaned it a few times look at all that dirt that's coming out of there so make sure the surfaces are clean before you put them back your new fuel injectors all right guys we got everything installed here we got the clips installed the gaskets are lubricated at this point we're going to reinstall it here the mounting surfaces are all clean everything is spotless so at this point just pop it in Again, this, uh, these uh, RSX slash 8th Gen Civic SI injectors are direct bolt-ons, so should make everything easier. All right, we put the fuel injectors back in. Those fuel injectors are used, you know, they probably have around 130,000 miles and we don't know the condition of them. We didn't get them flow tested or not. But one thing that I know is gonna help support the fuel system is fuel locks here. They're affiliated with us here. Cleans, lubricates, it's great for storage, helps improve performance and loss per gallon. Uh, this has awesome technology inside of it. We're gonna be using this in our gas tank to helpfully hopefully clean out those fuel injectors and make them work perfect. If you guys are interested in the fuel locks, link in the description below, check out with my code and you get a discount on fuel locks as well. Fresh bottle, baby, fresh bottle. Product's coming in hot. You don't need a lot. We're only just gonna take a drop. This is so concentrated, it's crazy. And that's that, that's all you need. This whole piece right here treats 80 gallons. Let's see other competitors do that. All right, we're here in the car. We got Hondata pulled up and we got our dog here just managing the tune. So right now you can see right here, this is the factory calibration here, 185 cc injectors. And these are our dead times, injector dead times. What we're gonna have to do here is swap this out to 310 cc there's already a built-in calibration i'm just showing you some basics but you're also going to have to change the injector dead times and i already got my tune set up for these injectors and i got everything right here under calibration we're going to go under fuel and these are the appropriate settings we see we went from 185 to 310 cc three bar of pressure these are the injector uh, 310 cc honda civic si injector dead time so you're going to make sure you have the right dead time so your fueling is appropriate and proper at this point what we're going to do we're going to upload this tune so we can start the car
So we got the ECU connected. You can see by the throttle position, it's adjusting. So I'm gonna upload this tune right now and then we'll be able to rock and roll after that. We're gonna start up the car, double check for leaks, prime the system. We're probably gonna have to prime the fuel pump about five times. Don't be cheap, you know, let's get the, that fuel in those new injectors. They were sitting for some time, so they're definitely starved. Excited, I'm excited. Prime did a starter up. That's a little rough, but she got it going. So I'm looking right now at the tune here. Once we go to closed loop, we're gonna be watching our air fuel ratios here and seeing if they're good. Right now it's kind of getting a little lean up closed loop. It's running okay. It's a little shaky at idle right now. We're just gonna let it run, but it's, it's working. Idle's a little rough. Let's go check over there on um, any leaks. But it is running a little leaner than usual. The tune might be affected slightly from the from the difference in injectors, but uh, as long as there's no leaks, so let's go inside, outside. So far, everything looks okay. I don't see any leaks, so should be okay. We'll let it warm up, lubricate the injectors a little bit and see what happens. Man, I guess I can put this away finally. Guys, I've been running the fuel injectors here for about a week and it's been running pretty smooth. No complaints, no issues, no stalling. And I've been monitoring the fuel trims. Everything looks pretty good. Uh, very comparable to the same tune and statistics that I was running with my factory fuel injectors. So that is good news. I'm gonna pull up a couple logs now. And I'm gonna show you guys how much duty cycle we reduced running the 310 cc fuel injectors compared to the stock injectors, right? All right, so the first log I'm pulling up here for you guys is when I had my stock injectors in here and I was running the Hondata factory settings map. And as you guys can see at Redline, it does run a little bit rich. Um, and we're using 89% of our injector duty cycle, which if you guys already know, you wanna stay around that 85 to 90% injector duty cycle range. If you guys are going into that 90, 95% injector duty cycle, it's just stressing the injectors too much. It, they're becoming less efficient and you know overheating. So yeah, 89% right on this log, I've seen as much as 92%, again, running the factory tune and with similar air fuel ratios like this. So once I was able to dial in my tune, adjust my fuel ratios, remember if you're running a little bit leaner, you may experience a little bit more bump in performance. So once I adjusted my fuel ratios right over here, you can see um, we, we increased the air fuel mixture a little bit at a red line. Look, we're only using 80% duty cycle running it hard so that helps the injectors it gives me a little bit more performance there was no knocking running you know mid 12 air fuel ratios in 60 degree weather you could see my intake air temps right over here again the hotter the intake air temps get you might have to run a richer air fuel ratio in the hot weather i'm still experimenting we're just transitioning into spring and summer right now so you know, I've, I was currently tuning the whole time in the cold weather, so I'm curious to see how the temps are gonna affect my tune in its naturally aspirated form, but it's okay. Either way, we're going turbo soon, so I'll be playing around with the turbo tune in the summertime. Okay, so like I said, 89, 92% was the stock tune stock injectors. Once we dialed it in, we narrowed it down to around 80, 82% duty cycle, which is a great improvement. And here comes the SI injectors, the 310cc. Right over here, guys, same fuel ratio, just like the last pull we've seen, but with the 310cc injectors, I'm running only 48% duty cycle. So that means we have a lot more room to add more fuel to exhaust the fuel injectors here. They, they can do a lot more work. I'm not exactly sure how much uh, duty cycle is added per pound of boost. You know, that's a calculation I'm gonna have to figure out. And hopefully we don't max these fuel injectors out, let's say with five to eight pounds of boost running 
uh, air fuel mixture that we're going to be probably targeting just to be super safe, like 11.8 to 11.8 air fuel mixture. That's what we're going to be targeting once we're boosted and everything is set in stone. But I've seen probably anywhere from 48 to 50 percent um, duty cycle here. I haven't seen anything higher than 50 percent, which is pretty consistent. So great improvement overall. I'm pretty happy. Everything was a direct bolt on. I bought the rebuilt kit, rebuilt it myself. I didn't get these injectors flow tested or anything, but judging from how they're performing, how the air fuel ratios are at wide open throttle and at idle, I don't think I need to. And that again, saves some costs. These injectors had around maybe 120,000 miles on them, but they seem okay. Everything looks good. I'm pretty dang happy. Again, the next steps will be buying more parts this month in may i will be ordering a lot more parts such as intercooler piping uh, bolts fitting stuff like that that we will need hoses so i'm excited i'm gonna be ordering the turbo itself last because there's a short warranty on that turbo about three months so i want to get that turbo component last so once i install it on the vehicle i can have that warranty period much longer than if I was to buy it last month, two months ago, or even right now. Anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. I hope you guys are learning something from these videos. I do appreciate you guys watching, commenting. Let's interact a little bit. Let me know if you're watching this turbo build and if you're interested in seeing it come to life. Anyway, guys, I'll see everyone on the next video. Again, if you're not watching my Instagram, follow me on Instagram. I post some stories on tuning and whatnot. So I'll appreciate that as well. Peace. I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame. Though it might be nice to own a jet plane, I'ma do it all for you. Come along and see it's true. But the world is pretty cold, you might need a sweater too. I'ma put a ride on ya, get from California. Trying to make it in life, it's school that never taught ya. Dreams of my